Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to Let's Play Celeste. Uh, today we are going to be tackling the Mirror Temple. And I love how we start the Mirror Temple. It's pretty low key. Oops, I think I have to dash up right at the last second. Just like you have to dash out of this. Dash downwards once you get the strawberry. That's a fun little strawberry challenge. There are a bunch of, a bunch of those honeycombed around the Mirror Temple. Uh, this level is incredibly atmospheric, and it is amazing in that it is a maze, but it's also very good. Look at the backgrounds. There are places in this game where the art is so incredibly detailed, and it's always exactly where the details need to be. The characters themselves are very simple, and most of the backgrounds, too. But every now and then, things get a little bit more complex in certain areas, and it's beautiful for it. And I think the, uh, the meandering, labyrinthine nature of the Mirror Temple adds to this uh, contemplative atmosphere after what was a big emotional peak on the gondola and the intensity of fighting against the wind before that. Uh, so we've come up to our first dead end. But at least we know now what we have to do. We have to find a key somewhere. We have no indication of where that key is. It's not too hard to find your way around here. Uh, you just have to kind of be diligent about checking all of the corners and all of the openings, seeing what is optional, what leads to a strawberry or a b-side cassette, and also making sure that you find as many of these light switches to activate by going past them as possible so you can actually navigate this efficiently. They also act if you're having a hard time figuring out what rooms you've been in and which ones you haven't checked or where in a room you haven't checked. Uh, they also act as a bread uh, breadcrumb trail that you can scatter as you go. If every light in a room is illuminated, you've, uh, you know you've been in there. Uh, so these little shards, you can see when you land on the ground, they dissipate. And it's not just about the order you get them in. Uh, I think the order might matter, but I don't remember. Either way, you just don't want to touch the ground. You can hit little bounce pads like this. That should have been... Uh, an up left diagonal jump. But we'll get it this time. Also, it doesn't matter if you cling to a wall. And that's a really cool little interaction. It's a nice chime, and it's just for a strawberry. Not apparent at first, but that strawberry is also supposed to lead your eyes over to the conspicuous hole in the wall, where we find the B-side for the Mirror Temple. Uh, we're not going after that, because we're not doing B-sides in the LP, as I've said before. Might show some of them off during a bonus, and the associated C-sides as well, which are in order of magnitude harder, harder than even the B-sides. Uh, so either way, we know it's not down, we know it's not to the bottom left in that room, so we just keep checking for where this key might be. Can't see it from here, so... Ah, these would have crushed us if we had not dashed again. And we're going to use the momentum to carry us to yet another strawberry. So the key to the mirror temple is really just exploring until you find the key. Did not mean to make that a pun, but I'll take it. So instead, let's try this. We haven't taken this path, and once again, we see that it's nothing but a strawberry. But there's something a little bit obscured from us. It's this path. This is the only way I can see someone getting lost in the Mirror Temple, is just not noticing that that path exists. So you just have to be a little bit observant. And speaking of observance, we are observing that we cannot get the key directly from that screen, so we have to take a long way around. This level is really cool. 
shows that they could effectively do a horror game if they wanted to, I think. They certainly can nail the moody atmosphere and the anxiety when they want to. So we hit that switch, and suddenly, now we can take the bubble to- Oh shit, I didn't climb the wall. So we have to do that over. Uh, by hitting that switch, we lift the gate, which means we can bubble dash over to the left, which... I don't know what that was. Uh, it will open up new vistas of this level. An entirely new path we didn't have access to before. Including getting that initial key, and then all oh, the cool fall down and the illumination of the big Eldritch Eye statue. Looks like a beholder. And we see that iconography all over the place, the tentacles and the eyes, not to mention the thorny bramble wrapped around the background, which it's kind of evoking that same tentacled Eldritch aesthetic, just in natural form. to the right, and then I don't particularly like this part, just because this screen is very long, and you're working on a cycle puzzle, but with something that's on a delay. Like, as soon as you jump into the bubble, it's not immediate that it takes off, so you're having to account for the cycle and the delay of uh, the bubble dash. Oh, that's cute. Uh, actually, let's go down first. See a dead ends on the left and pull the sacks on the right until we get another key. Oh, that's so cool! This whole section! Get some green flame and another enormous mirror. Cracked this time. Now pay attention to how the music is going to ebb and flow from here on out in the Mirror Temple. Oh wait, is this new? I genuinely don't remember this. I don't remember doing this on my first playthrough when this game came out. I feel like I should remember this though. I think the point of this is just to teach you the rules of these eldritch creatures by making you control one. I really don't remember this though. But you can see there are certain paths it can take, and some it can't. Dashes quite quickly, just like Madeline. But it flies. It's also got a different sense of inertia to it. That music change. Hey, where are we? What did you do to Theo? You think I'm doing this? That's cute. Sweetheart, this is exactly what I warned you about. Don't try to make this my fault. You still don't get it? The mountain gave me this body. But I'm not the only creepy thing living in that messed up head of yours. Don't like what you see? What a surprise. Shut up. I tried to stop you. Look into the mirror. All of this is yours. This temple only magnifies the mountain's power. You're in control here, not me. I don't believe you. If you're part of me, why don't you why do you want to hurt me? Poor Madeline, always the victim. All I do is babysit you and you hate me for it. You're unraveling and you know it. If you care so much about protecting me, why don't you just explain what's going on? Like you would have listened? You never gave me a chance. Please just help me get out of here. Now you want me to save you? Why are you doing this? Just be on my side here. Please. 
Stop trying to make me feel like a monster. You really want to know why I won't help? Because you deserve this. Still think you can climb this mountain? Shut up. I don't need your help. I'll do this alone. Listen very carefully. There are reversed vocals here. Uh, Lena Raines, the composer, is actually whispering Madeline's anxious thoughts. Uh, and then just layering it under some synths and reversing it. <laughs> it's so amazing. It's so good. It's horrible and eerie. Uh, and that is going to do it for now. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, ring the bell, check the links in the doobly-doo. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.